Welcome to the Lifeline Health Lecture. There are some people here that have been with me for one-to-one -one counseling. And you might have heard me say that if you eat between meals, that I consider that a tactic or practice that is almost suicidal. And in this lecture today, you will probably understand why I have this opinion. If you eat between meals, it is suicidal. It will sooner or later kill you. So let's talk about the eating pattern. Eating patterns. Now, this presentation here is based on studies done by the Loma Linda University and of observations collected by Peter Carstens in his practical work as health educator in the U.S. and in Africa. This presentation gives insight of the effect of eating habits on the catabolic metabolism, the nat which is the natural capacity of the body to free itself from toxins and acid waste during the time the digestive system is resting. So we will have a look at the catabolic metabolism, with it, which is releasing uh, toxins out of the body, and the anabolic metabolism, which is digesting and sending nutrients into the body. We are going to look at the, these uh, uh, the relationship between these two because they will never happen at the same time because the body is a one-way street. All nutrients go to the inside or toxins go, come out and go to the outside. Now, I was very blessed with our work that we did for several years in Africa where we trained medical missionaries, and we always had people very, very poor. We didn't only have to teach them, we had to feed them, to sleep them, and we had to dress them and buy them the neckties and the shoes and everything. They didn't have a penny of money. And so these people, they really would only eat when we put food on the table because they didn't have anything. Even if they would leave the mission, they still was, weren't able to be eating. And so I had them completely under control. I could observe them because I knew that they hadn't been eating between meals. By the way, eating between meals is not a practice that is practiced in Mozambique anyway because people are happy there if they get one meal a day. Very few get two meals a day because of the tremendous poverty. But anyway, let's have a look at this, uh, demo, this presentation here. We have here the interpretation of the colors. Red is the time of digesting. Blue is the time of resting. And green is the time of detoxing. So now let's first have a look here at the study that was done at the Loma uh, Linda University in California. They took a group of people and they gave them a breakfast at 7 o'clock. And then they introduced a little camera at one at eleven, no, sorry, at twelve o'clock at noon, twelve o'clock noon, they introduced a little camera into the stomach to see what was whether there was anything left from the breakfast. And there wasn't. And that was natural because they had fed them a vegan breakfast, and a vegan breakfast after four hours more or less should be digested. So if they introduced the camera five hours later, of course, there would not be any food in that stomach left. But then the next day, they did something interesting. They took the same, uh, uh, the same group, or maybe another, I'm not sure about that, but they took people, and they gave them also breakfast at 7 o'clock in the morning, and then at 9 o'clock in the morning, they gave them a snack. And I mean a snack, like a cookie or a piece of fruit. It doesn't have to be a meal or something like that. Many people tell, oh, I don't, I don't eat be between meals. I ju just have an apple or, or just an orange. Well, that is eating between meals. You might just chew a, a gum between meals. If there's sugar in it, you'll start your digestive system too. So they gave them a little snack, and then they introduced the same camera 
at 1 p.m., one hour later than the day before because, uh, well, maybe it'll take them a little bit longer to digest this food. Well, what a surprise. Six hours later, these people still had part of their breakfast in their stomach. So their next day, they did something worse. They gave them the breakfast at 7, and they gave them a snack at 9 o'clock, and they gave them another snack at 10 o'clock. So they interrupted the digestive process twice in the morning. And then they introduced the camera somewhere around 6 o'clock in the evening. And what a surprise. After all that time, they still found parts of the breakfast in the stomachs of these people. Now, what does that mean? That means that we interrupt our digestive process. The body cannot get back on track. And he will just, the stomach just starts digesting and he doesn't know what to do and he, there he keeps the food. Now, in this case here, they had their food for about 11 hours in, your, in the stomach. Now, imagine if you have parts of your breakfast for 11 hours all day long in your stomach. It is warm in that stomach, and there's a lot of acid in it too. So what do you think is going to happen to the foods that are sitting in that stomach for all this time? Well, of course, they will start to putrefy, and they will start to produce a lot of toxins. And besides all the load of toxins that we get already, now you get some toxins from the inside on top of all that. So interrupting your digestive process is a very, very bad habit. Imagine your stomach working like a, like a washing machine with all these different cycles, pre-wash, wash, uh, rinse, and, and uh, well, whatever they do there, I, I, I don't know. My wife manages the washing machine, so I don't know all the cycles there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so if you open up a washing machine, you put something in, well, it keeps going with the same cycle because it doesn't have a brain to know that you put something in there. But your stomach, who also works in, in uh, different cycles, once you put something else in there, he says, well, what I'm going to do now? I'm half finished with what I was doing, and now I got to start all over again. So what should I do now? And the stomach gets completely out of control, and then he doesn't know what to do. That was one of the observations. Now, here's an observation that I made myself. And it's very interesting. I had a family where there was a young boy. And uh, in fact, his uncle is right with us here today. He is managing our um, recording. And this little boy, he was at that time probably about uh, 14, 12 or 14 years old, like that. He was a little bit overweight, and he didn't have very good uh, eating habits. And so I caught him at home one day, and I had my, my little tape uh, with me, these, these uh, uh, hydron paper, the litmus paper tape. I had that with me, and I just heard that he just had eaten a big meal of rice and beans. And I knew that rice and beans is very acidic. So I thought, well, I get him now. And so I said, could you just go to the restroom and, and just uh, uh, pee a little bit and then Give me the tape and let me see how your pH is. Because I was sure that he, must, that he must be as acidic as possible because he just ate, the, ate this tremendous acidic meal. And there he came, and his tape was completely dark. He had a pH, a urine pH of about 8. Well, I didn't know what to say. And I don't really remember what I said, but I was speechless. What in the world was going on here? If he had an acidic person, had an acidic meal, and the urine was alkaline. I couldn't understand it. Well, later on in Africa, I made another observation. We had our Saturday morning breakfast. It's not uh, a salad, because, but we always have... Um, soaked oatmeal that we soak overnight, so it's raw, it's activated, 
And then in the morning, we mix it with two parts of fruit salad and one part of uh, oatmeal. So it was more fresh fruit than oatmeal. And when we would all go to church, now in Mozambique, church lasts a little bit longer. We would come usually home around 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. By 2.30, 3 o'clock, we were having lunch. And I used to measure everybody's pH because I wanted to know what was going on. And I always noticed that the pH was very, extremely acidic. I said, my, how is this possible? I mean, oatmeal is acidic, I know that, but the fruits that we have, they were fresh fruits. So why are we, and everyone, myself too, why are we so acidic? I couldn't understand that. And so I started to research the whole subject. And I got to this conclusion. Once you eat, like here we ate at 9 o'clock in the morning our breakfast, and then another one and a half to two hours later, so one and a half to two hours later would be about uh, uh, 1.30. At 1.30, at 10.30, your urine becomes very acidic, no matter whether you ate an alkaline or acidic meal. Sorry, your urine becomes very alkaline, not acidic. So an hour and a half to two hours after you ate, your urine will be very alkaline. Now, how does that happen? It doesn't really have anything to do with the food that we ate. It has to do with what our stomach is doing. Because our stomach, once we start eating, our stomach will use sodium chloride and uh, water and use the chloride here and a hydrogen from the water and produce HCl, which is hydrochloric acid. That is the acid that will dissolve our foods. But now the stomach got sodium left over and HO left over, part of the water molecule. What is he going to do with it now? He can't just dump it. So he takes uh, carbon dioxide, which is the gas that we exhale, which is usually toxic, so he takes that and then he adds sodium here and then the hydrogen, you will find it here on the formula, NaH, and then we got three, and then we got C, the carbon here, it's there, and then we got one O here and two O, o there, oxygen, and that makes three, that makes three oxygen. And so he forms this formula here, which is sodium bicarbonate. So at the same time that the, that the stomach produces one molecule of hydrochloric acid, it will also produce one molecule of sodium bicarbonate. Now the sodium bicarbonate is very alkaline. It has immediately to be picked up by the blood so that it will not neutralize the acid. Once it's in the blood, it will be taken to all the parts of our body and the, it will be used to neutralize the acids from the meal before. And whatever is left over from the sodium uh, uh, bicarbonate, whatever is left over will be stored in the liver, in the pancreas, in our saliva glands, and some other minor alkaline glands. It will be stored there. But being in the blood and being distributed in all the body, of course, it will also end up in our urine. So an hour and a half to two hours after you start eating, you will, your urine will become very alkaline. You can see the dark color here on this uh, screen. So it will be dark. And then you start reproducing, producing less and less hydrochloric acid, and that means also producing less uh, sodium bicarbonate because the digesting is the digestion is coming to an end and by the end of four hours in the fifth hour after eating your urine will be more or less neutral it will be having an, a ph of about seven somewhere around there and then in the sixth hour after you ate suddenly the urine becomes acidic again now, why does it become acidic? It comes be acidic because in the sixth hour after we ate, the body will start to naturally detox again because the anabolic process 
of digesting and sending the food, the nutrients inside, has finished, and now he gets, goes into the catabolic metabolism where he starts to throw toxins out. And once he throws toxins out, remember the exits of our body are four. It's the urine, the stool, our lungs, and our skin, right? And so uh, the, the acid gets into the urine and our urine becomes acidic. So really, by the, by the pH of your urine, you can almost determine whether you are digesting, finish the digestion, whether you are detoxing. You can see these things more or less during the day. Now, understanding this, with these two things I just explained, uh, uh, taking them in consideration, I build some eating uh, models here. And of course, this is pure theory, but that's uh, how it usually is in, uh, in practice. Now, I got six different eating models here. And you can see already, red is the time of digestion. Look how the digestion is increasing here. Then green is the time of detoxing, and blue is the time when the body is just resting. It is not detoxing nor digesting. But let's have a look at these models one by one. This here is the model that we are being recommended. This means that this person here is on two meals. And that's the best thing that we can do. We want to be on two meals here. The first meal is taken at 9 o'clock. You can have it at 9 o'clock or before. And then after six hours, which would be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the second meal is being taken. So here we got six hours of time, four hours of digestion, one hour of rest or, or switching gears or switching directions in the body, and there's one hour of detoxing. And then again, the digestion, the rest, and then we have the detoxing here of the night. Now, if we look at this in whole, we got eight hours of detoxing, we got nine hours, uh, sorry, we got eight hours here of digestion. We got nine hours of rest where the body can repair damages. And then we got seven hours here of detoxing. And that is a perfect time for detoxing. That's about the time that we need. So this is the best thing that we can do for our body. We have only eight hours of digestion. We got seven hours of detoxing and a lot of time for, of rest where the body can repair itself. Now, some of us cannot live on two meals because some of us have to have breakfast at five or six o'clock in the morning and then the day may got, get a little bit long and they may not be able to make it on two meals. So it is possible to take three meals. And you can see these meals here are, are being taken with, an, uh, with a time distance of five hours. This is four, five hours here. This is five hours. And then the last meal here. So we, are, we got four hours of digestion, one hour of, uh, of rest between uh, uh, digesting. And then we have the time of detoxing here. So look at this uh, graphic here now and then look at the one that we just saw before. What is the big difference? The big difference is here in the red, because here we are only digesting eight hours, and here we are digesting 12 hours. Now, we still get six hours of uh, detoxing and six hours of rest. That's perfect. Nothing wrong with that. But the problem here is the, dos the 12 hours of digesting. Remember that to digest three meals, it, especially when they're cooked, it will take us the energy of eight hours of forced labor. That's how much energy we need to digest three meals. Now, if you can reduce these here to two-thirds, if instead of eight hours of forced labor, you would only have to do a little bit more than 
I'm sorry, that's not the right one. If, uh, if instead of eight hours of forced labor, you would only have to digest eight hours, that would be two-thirds of the 12. That means we only would need a little bit over five hours of forced labor per day to digest this here. So can you understand now why with two meals you will have more energy than with three meals? Because it takes you so much energy to digest these meals. So this requires a tremendous amount of energy. And people say, oh no, I can't go on two meals because I'll get very hungry. Well, you won't get very hungry if you distribute your meals correctly and you would save a lot of energy. You feel very energetic. You won't feel so tired and so down. Now here we have another model. And this, I really only put it in here so that you can see that our times of meals, at meal times, can be flexible. They need to be flexible because we all have different needs and we all have to eat at different times. We got to adapt to our uh, work schedules and, and our physiological needs and all this. So here now is another person who cannot eat at, uh, uh, at uh, let's say, 12 o'clock. Here's mealtime. They have lunch at 1 o'clock. All right, so he has lunch at 1. No problem. One is about the last time, the latest, that you can have a, a second meal. You can't have it after three o'clock, if you after, after one o'clock, if you want to have a third meal. Because remember, the latest that we can eat is at five o'clock, right? So if you eat at one o'clock here, from one o'clock to five, that is exactly four hours. And that is the disadvantage here. Now, we do get one hour of detoxing between the first and second meal. But then here we got eight hours straight of digesting. So the body does not get any rest. Our, meta, our, our uh, digestive system is working eight hours straight. And we have again here the problem of three meals to be digested. But the detoxing is fantastic. It's seven hours here. And the time of rest also is perfect. The body has time to repair everything that he needs to. Good. To this point, everything was great. We had three models that are perfect. Shows us that we can vary if it's necessary. But now here we're getting into trouble. Because this is one of these uh, uh, great guys who says, no, I can do it, and I'm going to do it. No doubt. No, no, no. I've learned from Peter. I know how to eat now. I'm on the corrective diet. I'm going to do it. And, well, I have to eat at 7 o'clock in the morning. I can't eat later. So he has his meal at 7 o'clock, and then he has the next meal at 12 o'clock because that's uh, what he had, uh, sorry, at 1 o'clock because that's what he had uh, that's when he has his lunch hour, his lunch break. Good. So these two meals, he had planned them. And then he decided, no, 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 I can make it through the afternoon. No, no need to, uh, to eat anymore, and I'm not going to eat. Well, this poor guy, he had his second meal at 1 o'clock, and then he gets home at about, what, 7 o'clock? At 7 o'clock here, he gets home, and there is mom. And mom has never heard about Peter and has never heard about all these health talks and things. And mom just loves John. And she says, oh, John, come on. My goodness, you haven't eaten since 1 o'clock this afternoon. It's 7 o'clock. You've got to be hungry. Of course he is hungry. He ate six hours ago. And it doesn't take very much to convince him against his will to have something to eat. And so mom says, no, no, come on. Listen, I made you these wonderful chicken. I mean, it is so delicious. The whole house smells of it. And he is hungry, of course. He is going to have that piece of chicken there with some rice and beans. Oh, and it tastes so good. And how do you feel after having a piece of chicken? Well, you feel like just sitting down in a nice, comfortable sofa and then just play around with that 
thing there that you search the, the, the TV channels with. And he finally finds his interesting channel that he likes to watch. He knows he shouldn't be doing it because it will just destroy his mind because uh, uh, TV is really one of the worst things that we can do for our mind. I call these uh, machines the stupidifiers because they make you stupid because you, everybody later on says the same thing as what that TV thing just said there just said. So um, anyway, so he looks at this TV show, and you know how it goes. Every 20 minutes, they got an ad there about, oh, you know, these wonderful crackers or these crispy potato chips, and, and you have some uh, of these chickens flying over the screen and, and all this stuff. And so it's about 9 o'clock when he decides to go to bed, takes him a little while before he gets ready, and before he finally is ready to go to bed, it is 10 o'clock. But now he had seen all these ads on, uh, on uh, the TV about foods and stuff. And, uh, you know, he felt guilty already because he broke the, road, the rules here. He ate at 7 o'clock. And he knows with chicken and rice and beans at 7 o'clock, you will not be detoxing all night long because your digestive system has slowed down so much that it takes it a long time. It won't be able to digest that food in four hours. It might take it six, seven, or eight hours to digest it. So he decides, well, what the heck, I made a mistake already at seven o'clock, and, and uh, the truth is I feel hungry. Well, how could he be hungry? He got his stomach full with food. He hasn't digested it yet. No, he's only hungry because he saw all these, these chickens flying over the screen on TV and, and these ladies uh, uh, chewing on these uh, wonderful chips there. And of course, so he gets hungry. He says, oh, come on. I already broke the rules. I broke it, break it twice today. And he has another sandwich or snack or whatever before he goes to bed. And what's going to happen to him? Of course, he is going to digest all night long. Can you imagine when that poor guy wakes up in the morning? He will feel like a sack of potatoes. He won't be able to move. Oh my goodness, I feel so sluggish. I feel so tired. I need a cup of coffee to get going. And there he keeps doing the wrong things because he shouldn't have eaten at 6 or at 7. He shouldn't have eaten at 10. He shouldn't have, he shouldn't have a cup of coffee in the morning. But he does all this thing. Why? Because he stumbled here. And mom thought that she would do him her favor, but she really has been uh, um, putting a, a nail into his coffin. That's what she did. So this, I call it the person that knows, but a disaster person. He is, he is a complete disaster. Now look at this here. I mean, this person here, he got what? 19 hours of digestion? He got only two hours of detoxing. What does that mean? He is not getting rid of all the toxins from the day. He is digesting all day long. He is producing extra toxins in his, in his digestive system. And what is he going to, what is his body going to do? His going, body is going to develop fat and more fat and more fat to store all the toxins that he can't get rid of. That's what's going to happen. Well, that's what happens if we are not strict with a corrective diet, we really get into trouble. So let's be cautious with it. Let's be strict with it. Let's keep our recommendations. Let ha let's have our two meals. Let's have the time between meals. And especially be watchful at night that you won't fall because it will be a disaster. Well, now here we have another model. Now the first one, John, now this here, let's call her, her what? Jane or Jean or whatever. Let's say Jean. This is Jean here. Now Jean is a secretary and the, she has to go to the office in the morning. And as she gets up and at 7 o'clock in the morning she has some bacon and eggs and she may have a cup of coffee with it. Mom prepared it nicely so she picks a little bit of it and eats and then she leaves and she goes to the office and she gets to the office at 8 o'clock and at 9 o'clock she has been sitting in that office for about an hour without really doing anything because she doesn't feel all that good. She feels like kind of tired and stuff, and, and there is John running around, and so she says, hey, John, come here. Why don't you run just a minute over there? Because he does the, the errands, 
And uh, so why don't you just go over there and get me a little donut and a, a, a cup of hot chocolate? Because I really feel like having something sweet right now. Okay, says John, I will do that. And he runs over there and he gets her her donut and that sweet cup of coffee. And she just enjoys that stuff so much. But you know, if you get all that sugar into your body, what do you think is going to happen? This is all refined sugar. It will be digested in no time, but in a tremendous amount. And the body, the brain tells the body, listen, we got an emergency, a huge amount of sugar in our blood. Get that insulin going and so that insulin shoots into your blood to take care of the the sugar to put it back into to put it into the individual cells but then after a little while all that sugar is gone <coughs> and now what was her name Jean or, or Jennifer or whatever now this secretary she feels very hungry. If you eat something very sweet, your insulin shoots up, packs all the sugar away, then there is no more sugar coming into the blood, but the insulin is still there. So now the insulin starts packing sugar into your cells, and your sugar level, glucose level, will go below normal, and you will almost feel dizzy because of the low sugar content in your blood, not because your stomach is empty, but because your glucose goes down so, so far. And this happens to her, and the boss has not shown up yet, and it's almost 11 o'clock already. So she, she calls uh, John again. He says, listen, John, could you just run over there and get me a nice bagel with some cream cheese and maybe a cup of coffee or soda, whatever? And John goes and he brings her that food and she has that food. Well, how many did she interrupt here? Many times did she interrupt her breakfast already? Well, it's the third time that she has breakfast because everyone is like a breakfast that she ate. It's not even a snack. Anyway, at about what here, let's say at about 12 o'clock, the boss shows up. Oh, my goodness, uh, he tells his secretary. I just, uh, I had so much stuff to do at home, I just couldn't make it. And we got so much work to do. I really, I really need your help because we got to get all these letter outs and, and Juana or whatever her name is. She says, oh, boss, yeah, sure, don't worry about it. She says, listen, I can skip uh, I can skip uh, lunch for you. I'll do anything. So let's just forget about lunch and let's just go to work and let's work and work and work and work. And they work and work and work and, and they work until, until uh, 7 o'clock, until they finish. And then Juana goes back home and there is mom waiting for her with a meal. And of course, she also has a big steak with some eggs on top and a piece of cheese and some rice and and uh, what well, she even has a piece of salad as an as a, as a adornment for that plate there. Anyway, so she sits down and eats that meal because she says, Oh, Mom, you know what? I haven't had anything to eat all day long. I'm so hungry. I need to eat, of course. Well, sure, she, she forgot about the three breakfasts that they had, she had in the morning, and she didn't eat anything later because her stomach was still full with food and probably still has some fruit in her stomach. But now she eats that big meal, and then she also sits down and watches TV, and again, these, these uh, chickens that always fly over the, the screen there. And so at 10 o'clock before she goes to bed, she thinks that she is hungry again, and she can't sleep with an empty stomach. How could that be empty? It has been full all day long. And so she eats, and eats another sandwich. And of course, she'll wake up in the morning and she will just be groggy. She, she, she won't be able to get herself together because she feels so tired. My goodness, look at this. She has spent the work of probably 16 hours of more of forced labor. That's the energy that she spent to digest all this food here. And so... I gave her one hour here of rest for the, for the, uh, uh, f in these 24 hours. So I gave her this one, this one hour of rest here. Uh, she might not even be getting it. I gave it to her because I feel so sorry for that, for that little lady there. And, you know, I really feel sorry for these people because these are the people of the world that don't have any knowledge about health. 
and they get overweight because they can't get rid of the toxins and they get more and more overweight and they eat less and less and less, but they eat all these snacks and all the time they never finish digesting and so they just get more toxic and more toxic and more overweight or more overweight and they're desperate and these people need help and these are the people that we need, we need to work with. These are the people that we need to guide. And then here we have uh, just another model. It's about the same as a secretary. You can see i just uh, showing you here how these people eat while there is still, still a lot of food in the stomach and they eat again and again and again. And what's going to happen? Well, it's, they will just accumulate acids and toxins and get more and more overweight and get sicker and sicker. That's the problem. So these people are really, need some, really do need some help. Now, here we got the three models again. The first three ones that are okay. You can see the advantage here is the little time for digestion. So you save a lot of energy there, more than what you would get out of the other meal. You have a perfect time of detoxing and of rest. These three models are perfect. That's how we need to learn to live. And then here we got these uh, disaster man who knows but does, doesn't do right. He is still better off than the people, the other people that don't know anything because at least he gets here uh, one or two hours of detoxing. Now these people here don't get any. And they are constantly digesting. And then you wonder if you feel like you are chronically tired. Of course you're chronically tired. You do, you work, you do um, forced labor for 18, 19 hours per day. I mean, who would not be tired with doing all this work? I mean, we eat all this stuff and we think, oh yeah, our body takes care of it. Of course our body takes care of it, but it takes energy. And then we feel tired about it. So here are two pictures that I would just like to remind you. At 7 o'clock in the morning, our digestive system has the highest capacity to digest. And that is when we should have breakfast like a king. The most nutritious and biggest meal that we have in the day, we should have it in the morning. And I recommend to have it between 7 and 9 o'clock in the morning. And then let's not forget that our liver partially stops its function at 5 p.m. It will not receive the nutrients anymore and metabolize them. So that's another problem for the body. What is he going to do now with these nutrients? So I hope we get the idea why eating between meals or eating constantly is so detrimental for our health. And I hope you understand now why I call eating between meals or snacking, why I call that suicidal. And I would even recommend you not to eat any chewing gum between meals because it either has phenylalanin, which is this amino acid that they use in aspartame to make things, to sweeten things, so either that in the, is in there, and remember I taught you uh, that this phenylalanine will reduce your serotonin level in the brain, and it will make you schizophrenic, it will make you aggressive. So you don't want to eat that. Now if you eat that, that will probably not start your digestion, but it will make you schizophrenic. Now if you have a real chewing gum with real sugar in it, then you will start your digestion. So. I, neither one of the two, you want to use them. So please, get rid of them if you want to stay healthy. And I hope <clears throat> we have learned our lecture here and that you will remember and that we will uh, hopefully be uh, wise and go on the right diet with the right meal times and don't eat between meals. And you will be enjoying good health and vigor. Thank you and God bless you.